We start off this episode of Fly Brother in what I'd like to call my European hometown, Stockholm, Sweden. My boy Martin takes us around Old Town before showing us a few fire tricks, and my girl Jermaine Thomas, chanteuse extraordinaire, serves up a little hot jazz in the far north. Let's get fly. I'm Ernest White II, storyteller, explorer. I believe in connecting across backgrounds and boundaries. I mean, look at us, we're chasing the sunset. Join me and my friends. <laughs> What's going on, boy? <laughs> and discover that no matter the background, no matter the history, the whole world is our tribe. Come with me. Fly Brother. If you love to travel, please like and subscribe to the Fly Brother YouTube channel for full episodes from the television series, exclusive interviews and outtakes, travel tips, and details about upcoming meetups and trips with me to some of my favorite destinations around the world. Subscribe and let's fly. Stockholm. The capital of Sweden is a city of understated style and unquestionable beauty. A city of bridges and water. Of spires and streetscapes. Of interminably golden afternoons. And this late afternoon, I find myself headed to Temple Bar in the old town of Stockholm to see a few folks and hear a whole lot of funk. Whenever I'm in the Swedish capital for one of my extended stays, this motley crew is my family. The Jam Nation Band is a group of functified soul, rock, jazz, and hip hop musicians from Sweden and abroad who bring the house down every Thursday night. Friendly, engaging, and talented, the band members create a welcoming community space for groupies like myself. In Stockholm, they know music. Performers and producers, from ABBA to Robin to Swedish House Mafia, spring from these Swedish streets. But on a more intimate level, the musicians of Jam Nation bring creativity and soul to local venues on a weekly basis. Members of the Jam Nation band, with the trifecta of Carolina, Lova, and Jermaine on the mics, and rotating musicians Christian, Carl, Svante, Sten, Labros, J Bounce, form a loving community of like minded, like hearted folks who work their city jobs by day and jam by night. Originally from New York, my girl Jermaine Thomas has been living in Stockholm for 20 years. She's been singing for most of them, having gotten her start when she took a singing class on a whim. And now she holds together the jammingest band in the nation.
beauty of this nation is its diversity. An estimated 32% of Sweden's population is of immigrant background, and the Jam Nation brings that cultural mix to the stage and the audience in musical kinship. Jermaine and I met years ago at a travel conference, but we've since developed a friendship across oceans. We hang deep when I'm in town and we'll connect again later. Situated a straddle some 14 islands between the lake and the sea, Stockholm is the largest city in the Kingdom of Sweden and the region of Scandinavia, with nearly 2.4 million people in its metro area, almost a quarter of the country's population. Stockholm is the political, economic, and cultural capital of Sweden, generating 30% of the national GDP with its technology, service, and tourism sectors. Right in the middle of the city sits Gamla Stan, Stockholm's old town, dating back to the 13th century, long after the Vikings had settled down. Home to the Swedish royal family, grand palaces, and centuries-old restaurants, Gamla Stan is the axis around which Stockholm revolves. The next morning, I head outside to take in the atmosphere of central Stockholm. The first time I visited the city as a foreign exchange student, I was a wee young lad of 16 and stayed with the host family the summer between my junior and senior years of high school. Way back then, the city slogan was beauty on water. It's nice to see that over the, um, decades, not much has changed. Today, I'm catching up with my buddy Martin Ingerby, teacher and sometime troublemaker, who was born and bred in Stockholm. What's going on, boy? Very nice, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, What's going on, my brother? Good, it's good, good to see you, man. All right, boy. So what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to take a walk in uh, Old Town. Okay, all right. One of my favorite places. Okay. Well, let's do it. Yeah. How old is Old Town? Old Town is from 12th 12th century? No, 13th century. Yes. On sunny days, tourists and locals alike enjoy the charms of Gamla Stan, and we do too. Gamla Stan is also a great place for an ad hoc Swedish lesson. Okay, so toys, how do you say that in Swedish? Leksaker. 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 Good, good. Okay. They're natural. <laughs> right now, we're walking on Kullersten. Okay, say that again now. Kullersten. Right now, we're walking on Kullersten. How do I say I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts? A lovely bunch of coconuts. Yeah. I don't know when you're using that phrase, but... I use it when I go to the Swedish coconut store. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I actually, understand. they say it to me, and I want to know that they're saying it to me. Jag har underbara kokosnötter. Jag har underbara kokosnötter. I have wonderful coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know mm -hmm. the lyrics to Let It Go in Swedish? That's like a national song, isn't it, for you guys? Like a theme song. <laughs> Let it go? Yeah. Slap them less. Slap them less. Slap them less. Slap them less. <laughs> you should do it. Okay. Our tour of Gamla Stan continues with Martin leading the way. <gasps> Dude. Viking hat. 
fits you perfectly. It fits me perfectly. How do you say Pippi Longstock? Pippi Longstrumpf. Pippi Longstrumpf. That's uh, what does strum mean? Stocking? But her, hers were like this. Yeah, and they were and red. red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in lieu of red ponytail, we got blonde ponytail. Ho yo to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here we have Pippi Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking. She's coming into your town. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's they made a movie. In the, in the movie. She has uh, <laughs> Han Nilsson. Han Nilsson. And the horse is Lila Gubben. Lila Gubben. Yeah. What does that mean? Little glue? The old man. The old. <laughs> okay. For culture, history, or a respite in the midday sun, Gamlestan is where you want to be. Svenska Akademien. What's that? Swedish school? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. No, Svenska Akademien, that's where they decide the words. It's going to oh. be in the, the Swedish dictionary. Okay, now what kind of words go in the Swedish dictionary? Osthivel. Osthivel, what does that mean? Cheese slicer. Cheese slicer, uh, that's, Swedish that's very useful. Okay, so this is actually one of the most historical places historical places in in Sweden okay this is where because it's old the, yeah but in the 16th century the Danish king okay came here and took over Stockholm Hamlet the Danish Not king Hamlet it's Christian Tyrann okay the Not tyrant Hamlet. Christian the tyrant we call them but not the Danish. They called him Christian the Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But he took Funny. over Stockholm and he invited all the high up embassies okay. here to a party. And then he chopped their heads off. So 80 heads on this square. That's why they call it Stockholm bloodbath. The Stockholm bloodbath. Yes. Bloodbath. All the ambassadors from all the different countries just got chopped. No, no, no. Swedish high up. Oh, like nobles. Yeah, nobles. Yeah. Okay, okay, from all the different parts mm -hmm. of the country. So he shot all the entrances and then he read the note that they have signed loyalty to the Swedish king. Okay. And he said, this is treason to your new king. Mm. So if you look at that building. The red one. Yeah, they say that every white stone on the building symbolizes a head. I've known Martin since 2009, when he was my couchsurfing host on my first return trip to Stockholm after high school. Couchsurfing was a popular way to see the world back then, when you'd connect with people online who had couch space, futon space, or sometimes floor space for wayward travelers. Martin and his friends showed me an incredible welcome in Stockholm, and we've since become Afro-Viking soul brothers, or whatever. We'll also connect again later. Stockholm is a youthful city, a multifaceted city, a city that balances, with more success than most places, a respectful worldliness with tradition. Much of that balance is bolstered by a strong sense of what the Swedish call lagum. Not too much, not too little, just right. That way, everybody gets a piece of the pie. And what might be seen as slight pressure to fit in is made up for with, well, social security. It's a high wire act on a national scale, but it seems to work here. infrastructure side of that balance, the Stockholm Metro, the Tunnelbana, moves over 1.2 million people through the metropolitan area swiftly and efficiently every day. And coming from a car-centric society like the United States, it's always a treat to hop on the underground, overground, any ground, which is always full of characters. I 
I love it because the wind blows by you and you get to look fly, especially if you're wearing a scarf. One of my favorite features of the city is the golden Nordic sunlight on spring and summer afternoons. At just about the same latitude as Anchorage, Alaska, Stockholm in winter means almost total darkness all day. But today, the color is gold. Hi, I'm Ernest White II. You may know me from such films as I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts and Eating Fire. And fire might just be what's on the menu tonight. As a teacher for children with hearing disabilities and as a camp counselor for kids in Sweden and overseas, my buddy Martin developed his skills for performance and improv, sometimes as a clown, other times as a pirate or zombie. Tonight, he's a pyrophile. Show off. Welcome. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me, bro. <laughs> I put on some clothes. I know you're cold, man. <laughs> you got me out here freezing, and I'm supposed to be putting fire in my mouth. I'm going to teach you eat fire. Okay, eating fire. That's, yes. uh, wow. I know how to spit fire. Do you have life insurance? <laughs> no, this one... Okay. Uh, to eat fire. Okay. Pretty easy. Okay, it's easy, he said. Yes. Uh, you hold it as a pen. Okay. Like this. And then you stick it down. You open your mouth and you breathe out. Okay. So there's no air in the mouth. And while you're breathing, you're just closing your mouth over. Okay. So like this. Wow. Okay. okay. It didn't even look like it hurt. Do you want to try? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a choice? Okay, I, re I reframe it. Okay. Pen. <laughs> no, that's, it was fine. It was fine. Okay. So, pen. Yeah. Breathe out as I insert. Go like this. Okay. And breathe down. I'm sorry. Hold it. Like a pen. Yes. With my left hand that I'm not used to. Open. You have to put it down. You can't hold it there. You just have, have to be distinct and okay. And close your mouth. You can do it. Okay. Did it go in? I can't no. see it. My eyes are here. Don't hold it there too long. Okay. Down and close your mouth. You okay. Can't, you can't burn. Okay. If you just close your mouth over there. Okay. Stop okay. yelling at me now. <laughs> On camera. <laughs> okay. Finally. Yes! Good! Bruh. You did it. All right, man. Whew. You're official uh, fire eater. Fire eater now. I'm an official fire eater. Yes. In Sveria. In Sveria. Sveid and. <laughs> All right, Good. man. For me, eating fire is one of those once in a lifetime experiences that I never have to have again. But I can't help but admire the precision, dexterity, courage, and passion that keeps Martin literally playing with fire. Since we didn't get the chance to really catch up after the jam session, Jermaine and I connect to talk about what she loves about her adopted hometown. Jeez. <laughs> Martin sends his regards. Jeez. Yeah. Fire shows and whatnot. And I was waiting. Like, I, parched. <laughs> I had this uh, fire eating <laughs> session happening. What's going on? Nothing much. So, I just, you know, hanging know. out. Now, you were phenomenal last night. Thanks. Let me take my hat off so I can. <laughs> adjust what do you love about living in stockholm wow that's a loaded question i love the fact that there is there there is there's trees and nature all around even apartment buildings i mean most people think in certain areas it's oh you live in like oh those all oh, those tall buildings and oh there's not much there i'm like 
there's tons of grass and greenery all over the place. You know, you can walk a few blocks and be near the water. Mm. Um, and just going around all over the place. I mean, it's very easy. Transportation is very easy to get around. Uh, going from point to point. And it's just, it's very, it's just, I think the best word I can describe it as just easy. You know, it's just, you know, you can ease into it if you allow yourself. Okay, so it's like a... Stockholm's like a Sunday morning all the time. More like a Wednesday afternoon. Easy you know. like Wednesday afternoon. Easy like okay. Wednesday afternoon, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are your favorite places in Stockholm? My favorite places. Music-wise, it's Stompen. I go there for the afterworks on Friday night to see one of my favorites, and his name is Derek January, the voice of soul, and his band, absolutely amazing. Uh, of course, going to Temple Bar and uh, seeing people that perform that, that I know, and as well as, you know, our own gigs. Uh, Cultural-wise, the one, I'm not, I, I like museums, but the one museum that I really like going to is the Foster Museum. I okay. love seeing that ship and the fact that they built a museum around the ship. That's kind of cool. Yes, that is, that to me alone is, I don't even have to go inside. Okay. <laughs> I just like, oh, you know. So tell me a little bit about the soul scene here. Like, why is there a soul scene in Stockholm? Isn't that a bit random? <laughs> you would think. <laughs> but I guess not. It, I think a lot of it started way back. As far as, well, as far as I remember from hearing, even with gospel, a lot of it started like about the 70s because they, okay. they still had a lot of rock and roll and, you know, they were into their dance band and, and they, you know, they had a lot of soul, you okay. know, I mean, even with Elvis being soulful in his own way and Chuck Berry and everyone else. Okay. So they had all that. The history was already there. They, they enjoy music. Here. Yeah, mm -hmm. they enjoy music, and they were, yeah, all these artists were coming here. Aretha Franklin. Uh, oh gosh, thousands. Night. Yes, and the Pips. All of them. All, <laughs> all the of pips. them. All the Pips. <laughs> and then there be a Pip behind. <laughs> Marry a Pip behind. Marry a Pip behind. <laughs> Yeah, they all were coming here and touring and, 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 and giving concerts and people were just loving that, you know, and it just continued on and it went into the, a lot of the pubs. They wanted to hear, you know, a lot of blues and old R&B and, you know, soul and that's what they listened to in a lot of the pubs that are in Gamblestan especially. Mm. So, and just kept going. So what was the name of the event that we went to last night? Oh, we call, we call it the Jam Nation. Every two weeks, it's the Jam Nation. Okay. With the ja yes, with the Jam Nation Jam band, Nation. Jam Nation. Yes, Jam Nation Thursdays. Jam. Jam. Oh, damn. <laughs> Is that copyrighted? I'm just glad to have you here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad to be here as well. I'm glad to have you here okay. again. We couldn't leave Stockholm without a recipe, and my girl Jermaine, who isn't just a chanteuse but also a chef, recommends her favorite Swedish baked treat, a springtime sweet bun called Semla. To make eight to 10 buns, you'll need one 50 gram package of yeast, 100 grams of butter, two and a half deciliters of milk, one egg, one deciliter of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of cardamom, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and eight deciliters of all purpose flour. For the filling, you'll need 100 grams of almond paste, two to two and a half tablespoons of milk, two deciliters of whipping cream and confectioner sugar. Pour the yeast into a mixing bowl. Melt the butter in a pot on the stove. Pour the milk into the pot after the butter has melted and when the mixture is finger warm, pour it into your mixing bowl with the yeast. Attach your dough hook and put in the rest of the ingredients. Spoon in the flour and let it mix thoroughly until it pulls away from the bowl. Take the dough and place it into a clean bowl covered for 30 minutes. Preheat your oven to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Take the dough and knead it until it is smooth and elastic. Then divide it into eight or 10 smooth balls and place them on a baking sheet with baking paper. Cover and let them rise again for about 10 to 15 minutes. Take one egg and give the buns a good egg wash, then bake the buns in the oven for about 10 minutes. Place on a rack to cool. Meanwhile, grate the almond paste into a bowl, add milk and blend. To fill the bun, slice off the top of each bun. Dig out a hole similar to a soup bread bowl. Blend together a little of the extra dough with the filling paste and put a spoonful into the opening. Whip the cream into a thick, stiff consistency. Use a spoon or a piping bag and apply to the roll. Put the top back on the bun, sprinkle with confectioner sugar, and eat. What I love most about Stockholm, aside from a group of phenomenal friends, family really, who accept me just as I am, is the fresh, cool calmness of the place. Fire shows notwithstanding, if chill were a city, it would be Stockholm, beauty on water.
Stockholm is always a good idea. If you enjoyed watching this episode as much as I enjoyed making it, then please like and subscribe to the Fly Brother YouTube channel for more episodes from the series, exclusive interviews and outtakes, travel tips, and details about upcoming meetups and trips with me to some of my favorite destinations around the world. Subscribe and let's fly. To join the Fly Brother travel community, or to order your own copy of this episode, visit flybrother.net.